Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in beautiful downtown Las Vegas and to the funeral service for Mary Seafelt, individual who fought the good fight, who finished the race, and who kept the faith in Jesus. Amen? So we're here to celebrate her life. But before we do that, I'm going to have one of her daughters, Sarah, with an H, come forward and tell us a little bit about the life of mom. It's nice when a family member can do this. It personalizes the, the service. And let's say good morning, Sarah. Good morning. When I think about my mom, the words that would best describe her are happy, joyful, strong, determined, loyal, tenacious, wise, kind, stubborn, but I can confidently settle on the word love. My mom was so full of love. You would see it in every aspect of her life. I was told she was a happy child. I don't doubt that. None of us would. She loved her parents. She loved her big sister, her big brother and little brother. She was all about family. She loved her grandma. She said when she was a little girl, she'd go pick flowers, I believe, from the cemetery and take them to her grandma's house. She said a few times over the years growing up, quite a few times over the years, that she can't wait to see her grandma again. She loved her grandma so much that I know for a fact that the moment she entered into heaven, her grandma was the first person she saw. She loves my dad. <laughs> In 1969, my dad walked into Stroh die casting and my mom was up front. She worked on the office side. He worked in the, I want to say the foundry or the shop. Um, they couldn't mingle together. Mom had a boyfriend at the time. And um, dad knew that he couldn't ask her out on the date, not because of the boyfriend. He's challenge accepted. Um, so he quit his job and he went to go work construction so he could ask mom out. They rode that roller coaster ride of marriage for 53 and a half years. They went on dates, they were playful, they fought as any couple would, and they were dedicated to each other. They never quit, no matter what. They faced their challenges together, and they supported each other through and through. Trust me, raising the five of us kids was not a walk in the park, not at all. She truly loved being a mom. She put her whole life into us. My mom was a warrior. Her first baby at 23 years old was severely disabled physically and mentally and would require full dependency on my parents. My mom loved Kristen so much. All that comes with mothering a special needs child, my mom nailed it. She wasn't just an incredible mother to Kristen though. She also made certain that Eric, Bob, Kim, and I also felt special. She spent years putting together photo albums for each one of us throughout our childhood years. She never missed a school event or a sporting event. She loved to watch us all able-bodied kids run cross-country and happily spent hours at the track for our meets. She never missed a bowling tournament for Kristen, and Kristen has taken the trophy home a few times. She made sure that every birthday, every year, for each one of us was a big deal. She drove my dad crazy every Christmas when she decided to give us all an early Christmas present because he knew she'd go out and replenish it, even after they agreed on the Christmas gift budget. She always said it only takes one kid to drive you crazy, so five wasn't anything crazy in her mind. It was always entertaining. Also to listen to her list off all of our names in random order until she got the one that she wanted to holler at. Kristen, Sarah, Bob, Kim, uh, Robert. My mom was determined to take our uh, family to Walt Disney World for the first time ever to celebrate Kristen's 21st birthday because see, doctors gave Kristen uh, just really a few days to live. They said, go home and love her. But because of love, she thrived. She lived for 31 and a half years. My mom would stand by that, this always, that because of love, she thrived. And we can't deny she was right. <clears throat> I went out of order. I apologize. 
My mom loved being a grandma. She was invested in them from the start. She baked with them. She danced with them. She spent hours with them at the park and planned fun outings, way too many to count, because she truly loved spending time with them and to make memories. She celebrated their wins and comforted their cries. She was happy to pick them up from school or jump in to watch them overnight. The sleepovers at grandma's were the best. There is no doubt in their minds, I'm certain of it, that she know that they know she loved them. She was so silly. She would always mess up colloquialisms. <laughs> I can hear her laugh ring in my ears. It was kind of a two-syllable <laughs> that invited you to laugh with her. When we'd bug about what we're having for dinner, she'd say, dog poop on a bun. She was always cooked dinner for us. We almost always sat down as a family for dinner every night. It was her slopped together spaghetti that I think of when I think of family dinners. And I'm sure she's like, really, Sarah, of all the things that I've made you? But I, I think it's because of all the love she slopped in there for us. She loved root beer floats and teaching fitness classes at the YMCA. She loved to play the piano. As a young adult, she was a concert pianist and put on performances. She's one of those that enjoyed black licorice. Um, Mom was inspiring. She started teaching aerobics at the West Suburban YMCA when us kids were little. She did very well that she was promoted to fitness director position. Then she ventured to the Waukesha YMCA where she continued on with enthusiasm and drive. Of course, it didn't end there. She proved her loyalty and dedication that she finished her YMCA career as the executive director for the Durango YMCA out here in Las Vegas. My mom believed in being rich in love. We traveled a lot to make memories. Whether it was 17 hours to Georgia or one hour to a state park, we would load up and go. I'm going to miss her hugs. I can speak for the rest of the family and say they will too. We'll all miss her bright, cheerfully genuine smile. She is a beautiful soul. She was kind. She was giving. She poured so much love out of herself into others. Mom, thank you for everything that you were and still are to all of us. You may have flown off to heaven, Mom, but you left us with beautiful memories and a very strong example of God's love. Mom, thank you for your love. It will be what we all carry with us as we make our way home too. Well done, don't you think? Thank you, Sarah, for sharing a little bit about the life of your loving mom. And she was, and she was silly too. That's what made her so much fun. I think the two words we'll focus on today are the words love, I like that, and the word poor. You'll see that word in the reading from, from Timothy a little later on in the service. Now I'm doing the clicking as we go through the worship service. We're going to turn our thoughts from Mary to the Lord Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of her faith, the God who made her, who created her, and most importantly, who loved her. By the way, he loves you too. So if I get it wrong with the clicker, if I'm a little behind, please forgive me. Um, I know that Mary would. We celebrate the life of, of Mary by beginning this service in worship, and the same name was given to her in her baptism. The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing the...
He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Old Testament reading is from Job, the 19th chapter. He said, Oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead, or engraved in rock forever. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Epistle, Second Timothy, the fourth chapter. The Apostle Paul wrote, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's rise for the Holy Gospel. St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, and please read along with me the rest of it, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We're seated. Well, we're going to pray first before. Go ahead and be seated. <laughs> you can be seated. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we're, we're thankful that Mary was a grateful believer in Jesus. Nothing else really matters. This life is so short, it's the blink of an eye compared to eternity. Help us all to remember that and to walk in faith with joy and with love as Mary did. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We sing.
back to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Paul said, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering. The time has come for my departure. I fought the good fight, I finished the race, and I've kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. As Mary often heard at the beginning of the sermon, these words from Paul, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I like to tell the same, same story at funerals, so FGS members, you probably heard these, but not everybody else is an FGS member that's here. And they apply, and the story is told about a minister who came back to a church to preach, and the people hadn't seen him for years, and one of the elders said, uh, My, you are getting very gray and silver, Pastor Reed. And he didn't take it personally. He said, I am getting older. <laughs> and he thought about that, and in his sermon he referred to the fact that he was whitening, and he said, you know, it reminds me of a flower that appears in Switzerland called a snowdrop. A little white flower that comes up to the snow just before spring is here to let the world know that winter is about over. He said, my winter's about over. I'm just about ready to enter the eternal springtime of my Lord. Well, if you haven't noticed outside, winter is just about over. Right? Enjoy the cool air today because it's probably not going to be here at the end of the week. I'm here to tell you today that Mary Seafelt's winter is over as well because she entered the eternal springtime of our Lord on Saturday, March 23rd. And that's why we're here in this place. Good place to be. It's a place that Mary liked to hang out, she liked to come to church. She liked to worship the Lord. She liked to smile and be joyful and sing His praises and thank Him for all the blessings and even the wonderful husband and five children that she had and all the grandchildren too. I mean, she set an example for everyone in the household. It wasn't a choice, you know. Sometimes uh, people say, hey, are we going to go to church this Sunday or not? That wasn't the way it was in my household, probably not in the Seafeld house. You know, it didn't matter how late you stayed out the night before, you knew where you were going to be the next morning. Let me ask you this. Do you give your uh, kids a choice to go to the doctor? Do you give your kids a choice to go to the dentist? Yeah, a, ch a choice on whether to brush their teeth or not? Then why would you even say, hey, you want to go to church or not on Sunday? No, that's Something that we're going to do that's built into who we are as a family to honor the Lord Jesus Christ, to keep him number one, to seek first his his righteousness and his kingdom and everything else will be yours as well. Amen. I think Mary knew that. That's how it worked. And that's how it worked with her family, her mom and dad. She had the privilege and the honor of being raised in a Christian home. Not everybody has the privilege and the honor to have Christian parents who bring them to the baptismal font. By the way, she was baptized, she was confirmed and married all at the same church, Mount Calvary Lutheran in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Do we have any Brewers fans in the house? <laughs> That's incredible. She uh, Lutheran schools for entire life. Uh, Milwaukee Lutheran High School graduate, 1966. And all the kids went there too, is that right? And some of y'all had the same teachers that she had. Is that true? That is incredible. Uh, thank goodness that her parents modeled how to put Jesus first. And I think the reason that she was so giving and, and she was loving and so serving is that she had heard about the the servingness of God and the lovingness of God and the forgiveness of God and the patience of God and the care of God and the compassion of God all through her growing up years. She couldn't help be, be compassionate. She couldn't help but serve others. She couldn't help but have a smile on her face. She couldn't help but forgive others and care for others and be compassionate with others and try to motivate others and deal with other people in God-honoring and God-pleasing ways. She saw it modeled before her, not only by her parents, but by the one who did it for her. And that made a huge difference in her life. It's interesting that the Apostle Paul writing in Timothy, he says, for I'm already being poured 
out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. Well, what's Paul talking about here, a drink offering? That's stuff they did in the Old Testament. Well, in this statement, Paul is actually making a profession of faith, kind of like you do when you're confirmed. He compares his being a prisoner in jail, listen to this, to a drink offering. What does a prisoner in jail and a drink offering have anything to do with each other? Well, according to the law, it was written in the book of the Old Testament book of Numbers, when a lamb was sacrificed, wine was also poured out on the side of the altar. It was an offering and it was the final act of the entire ceremony. And what this picture for Paul was the gradual ebbing away of his life and the idea that why he viewed his entire career of faith as a living sacrifice. He looked upon the present stage of his career as being the final sacrificial act. Well, in a similar way, Mary's life was also a profession of faith. Throughout life's struggles, the highs, the lows, the ups and the downs, the one hour trips and the 17 hour trips, she remained faithful to the end. And, you know, maybe towards the last days or weeks or months or even a couple of years when things weren't working so well, she probably felt like her life was ebbing away. But like Job in the Old Testament, Mary went through it all, but was still able to say those classic words. I know that my Redeemer lives. And for those of us who knew her well, uh, we knew that she was a giver. Why? Because God made her that way. That's the reason she was so giving and, and so generous. And as Sarah shared with her, she was cheerful. She was smiling, caring, energetic. She was a, a kind of a go-go lady, not a slow-go or a no-go, but a go-go. Always doing something with family, with kids. And she always wanted to be a mom. And like Sarah said, she always wanted to make people feel special. And she learned that Jesus had poured into her, given new life to her when she would remember that she was baptized, when she would read a portals of prayer, when, when she would listen to a boring sermon in church, when she went to Holy Communion to receive the body and blood of Christ. You know, that's Jesus just like pouring into her. She couldn't help but pour into other people. That's how it works. You have nothing to pour into others if you're, somebody's not pouring into you. You see that how it works? So God pours into you. Jesus pours into you through his word, through baptism, through the Lord's Supper, through portals of prayer divorces. You hook yourself up to the IV of Jesus Christ and you just can't help but pour yourself into the lives of other people. You know, down in Texas, that's my home state. You know, we have a bumper sticker that says, don't mess with Texas. Well, as a Christian, maybe we should say, don't mess with God and don't mess with the Holy Scriptures. Mary might have a bumper sticker that says, don't mess with her kids. Because <laughs> her kids and her husband meant everything to her. And because God had poured his grace into her life, that's what she did with them. That's what she did with her grandkids. That's what she did over at First Good Shepherd Lutheran School or when she was a, a director of fitness at the YMCA. Just continually, by the grace of God, pouring into the lives of other people. Well, she probably knew that the time had come for her departure, the impending death that awaits us all. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Had come to take her home. It was trying time to cross the finish line of life. She had not only fought the good fight and finished the race, but she had kept the faith, the faith that returned, retained personal trust in God, her confidence in all of his Christ-centered promises in the spiritual arena of life. She not only fought hard and ran well, but she was sustained to the end, sustained to the end by a deeply rooted conviction that she would receive a prize the glorious reward. And what is that reward for those who believe in Christ and remain faithful to the end? Well, it says in Timothy, a crown of righteousness. That crown is Mary's by right. It was earned for her almost 2,000 years ago when Christ died on the cross and rose from the dead. And from other passages, we learn that it means eternal life in heaven with Jesus 
and other believers. Well, a man who had written a great best-selling song was out driving his car and somehow he got lost out in the country. He was probably some driving somewhere in the rural area of Wisconsin. And he stopped by a farmhouse, probably a dairy farm, and, and up on the porch was an aged woman he, just sitting and rocking with dark glasses on. And he went over and saw the man in the yard and he asked how to find the way. He got out the directions and this man was just whistling all the time. And he said, I'm kind of interested in your whistling. Why do you whistle all the time? The farmer said, well, I whistle all the time because my wife became blind after 42 years of marriage. It was a terrifying thing for her. It made her feel very insecure. But I found that when I went outside and would whistle and just keep whistling, it was my way of telling her, honey, I love you. I will never leave you or forsake you. And I will always take care of you. That's what Mary did for her family, for Kristen, for Eric, for Bob, for Sarah, for Kim, and the grandkids, Layla, Shelby, and Oliver, and oh so many others. It's also what Skip did for Mary. Just taking care of the one he loves. Just as God could, took care of the one that he loves. And all of you. He's telling you that he will see you through the tough times of material, physical, and emotional distress. He'll be with you with others when others forsake you. Others may come and others may go but he'll stick with you. He'll stick with you when you're getting older, when the white comes on your head, and he'll be there for you as he was for Mary when she crossed the finish line of life. So, fight the good fight. Finish the race. And like Mary, with the help of the Holy Spirit, keep the one true faith. The crown of righteousness awaits you. God bless you all. Amen. Why don't we stand and confess what Mary believed to be true about the triune God and what we believe to be true as well as we confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We're seated for the final hymn.